Hey everybody, this is Tucker from Matt Kiteboarding, and today I'm going to show you the 2024 Starboard Takeoff. Uh, we just got a bunch of these in the shop, so they're available now if you'd like one. And this is a really neat board. It is a fresh design uh, for 2024. A lot of new things going on here. Uh, they're really applying what they've learned in previous years. Uh, and also a couple of constructions to talk about here for the takeoff. Um, so let's go over this board real quick, give you some of the details, and then I'll hit you with my review after riding it for a little while now. All right, so what we have here is the starboard takeoff. This is the 5.0 75 liter variety here that I have. And the first thing you're gonna notice on this board is it's kind of an alien shape. They really, you know, took the design to the extreme thinking about what you want from a foil board and how they can make that experience better without just going to a standard tried and true shape. You know, they're really pushing the limits of design here and construction to give you a really unique model. Uh, and there's some really cool advantages to this unique shape and some of the stuff that they're doing here. And we'll start with the deck because this is kind of the most obvious thing. This thing has a big scoop in it um, that you can probably see here. It kind of looks like a skateboard deck although this middle section here is predominantly flat. Uh, that really just gives you the easiest transitions and foil control. And then once you start to get up towards the rails a bit more, there's a bit more uh, concave to it. There's a bit more ramp on this. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, what you got there is just so you don't put your, your foot too far to the edge of the board, not realize it, slip off, or get your feet out of position. Uh, when you're on this board, you can, you can kind of tell where you're at without looking down on it, and especially on the back foot, uh, which a lot of times is kind of that critical offset towards your toes, you're gonna start to feel that ramp a little bit when you're sort of locked in into that, you know, normal position for most foils. So that's really neat. And then additionally, they also have a different traction pad. Once you get further back here by the kicktail, uh, that's a diamond traction rather than the corduroy here. And that just gives you a, a different textile uh, or texture here where you can feel it and know kind of where your foot is. Same thing for this middle red patch here. It's a horizontal corduroy rather than uh, the vertical corduroy running this way and then running this way that you have here. So you can kind of feel that as you move back, but also it gives you something to push off of in a turn uh, rather than wanting to move your feet around, which you do up here a bit more and kind of push against it this way. This one, you know, you're pushing backwards against it a lot of times if you're riding fast, driving up wind and that just gives you a bit of a different traction, a bit of a different feel for your feet. So the little details, it's really neat uh, where that is. And then also you got these holes here, which at first kind of look just graphical, um, but what you got there is this is sort of the sweet spot of the board. This is sort of, you know, where is gonna be the center line of your body as you're riding for the most part. Uh, maybe even a little bit further forward towards this front hole, you know, in terms of, you know, with a lot of foils, but maybe even back here, if you're riding more surfy and you want your feet a little further back, more board in front of your feet. Um, but it's kind of a unique uh, tactile, you know, feel there, but also visual uh, when you're looking down and you want to know where you're at in relation to where your foil is under the board, obviously you can't see it. So having those reference lines is really cool. And then also down the center line here, we have a reference line uh, that's going to let you know where your feet are in relation to the center of the board. So a lot of times I kind of have the ball of my front foot over that center line and then my heel on the other. And that's a nice sort of offset for me with a lot of foils. The bigger the foil, the more aggressively you're riding, the more offset you're going to be a lot of times. And if you're riding a really small, reactive, kind of twitchy foil, a lot of times it'll be right on the center line. So it's just nice to know where that is, especially as you're switching feet and moving around. Maybe if you're surfing, not riding straps, you're really moving your feet around. Having those references uh, really just make that a lot more intuitive as you're moving around the board so you know where you're at. Um, towards the front, a lot of times you're going to have a reference line for where your sort of knees end up so that when your knee's starting, you sort of know where that is. On this board, you really don't need it, although we do have the starboard logo here, as you can see, so you can kind of know, okay, yeah, I usually have my knees along like the T or whatever, but we have some pretty uh, visual strap inserts on this board which are unique as compared to other boards that you know are sort of drilled there and you can't kind of see them unless you put straps on it this one you know it's a bit more open they're sort of countersunk into the traction pad they have a different hole pattern because of the way some of their straps work uh, so it's definitely a bit more visual you don't necessarily need that i find my knees are kind of somewhere in here in the middle 
<clears throat> of the bolt pack, excuse me. Um, so you might look at it and think, okay, why are your knees, you know, way up here when you have, you know, so much board, you'd think they'd be kind of here, you know, more in the middle towards the back. Um, well, you can definitely tell this board in particular has a lot of nose volume here. So what you got here is there's some scoop in the nose rocker in the nose. Obviously this kind of concave deck, rather than have it continue through the front, <clears throat> what you got is a little bit of a bulbous nose here that's gonna add some volume to keep the nose floating. It's really nice, especially in swell, you know, where the, the current and the waves might be pushing your board around. This is gonna keep the nose from diving and daggering, uh, purling that nose where, you know, you wanna keep it kind of at the surface of the water. It does that really well. The other thing it does is when you're going through chop or when you're kneeling on it, it's gonna redirect some of that water off and away from the rail so that it doesn't pool in here uh, in the middle of the board. And that's not really a huge concern because usually the board's kind of tilted up, the nose up, if you're not foiling. And then, you know, the concave runs all the way through the back here. There's this big channel where it just runs off. If you're moving at all, it just runs off. And when you're foiling, you know, and this is, this is level, it just runs off. And that's partially why you have a partial kicktail here. It's just kind of a block so that there's lots of room for that to flow off so that's not adding weight to your board and mucking things up uh, as you're riding around. So yeah, I first looked at it and I was like, oh man, the water's gonna kind of pool on there, but it does evacuate out really fast. You don't even notice it. And in swell, it's actually kind of nice, you know, if you get a little bit of pooling in here, just to give the board a bit more ballast, to give it a little bit more low center of gravity, um, because this board, you know, is, you know, sort of in the middle for me, you know, it's not big, it's not small. So it can be a little bit corky, um, even though it's 5.0. You know, it's got some good length for its size. It's, uh, you know, I'd probably size down for a high wind board. This is sort of a do-it-all size for me. So you accept some compromise there. It's not a real light wind board. It's not a real high wind board. So it's sort of somewhere in between. Um, so that definitely gives it some more stability and, and ballast and just ease of use in general. So that's real cool. Uh, the other thing that I'll mention that this does with these sort of uh, ramps here on the rail and also, you know, just getting up is it gives you a nice kind of, uh, what do I want to say, like a handhold here for your thumbs and your palms to rest on. You know, it's not like a curve, you know, dome deck curved away where it's sort of slippery and you're trying to get up and you're doing this, you know, and uh, having, the, having the traction pad go all the way to the rail and having those levers that you can just kind of hang on to is really nice for the board control. And also when you're kneeling, just something to push against to balance, to know where you're at on the board um, so that you're not slipping off, falling off, you know, ending up in the wrong position on the board and being sort of unstable. Uh, so that's kind of unique. So you heard me mention the unique strap inserts. I'll give you a view of that here real quick. So you check those out. We have, you know, the insert holes here, but then also sort of this little spot in between. And for some starboard straps, they actually have a keeper that sort of drops into there so that the washer doesn't twist. The strap sort of stays neutral. Um, with starboard boards, you are going to need to use starboard screws. They're a little bit bigger. They're about a, mil a millimeter thicker uh, with some bigger threads. So these are drilled and tapped for those specifically. So your standard windsurf, surf strap, countersunk, or not countersunk, uh, your standard windsurf, surf strap, um, self-tapping screws are going to be a little too small for this. So don't use those. You're just going to end up stripping it out. It's not going to hold in well. Uh, so if you're ordering straps along with your board, just ask us. We can include some screws for you uh, for free with that purchase uh, so you can use these. Um, they also got a wide span. There's a lot of options here. You can go, you know, all over the place on this board. There's really a lot of options. So there's a big range where no matter how your stance is or what foil you're riding, you know, there's, there's kind of a strap option for everybody with this. Uh, so it really gives you a lot of really neat options and, and they're really well built. So that's great on starboard, especially in the smaller models. If you're out there jumping, doing freestyle, stuff like that, uh, or if you're just somebody that feels more secure in straps, then they've got them here for you and it works real well. Um, so that's kind of everything on the deck here. Let's flip it over, take a look at the bottom, which is fairly simple really if you're looking at it. Um, no. No real bells and whistles here, just things that work, you know, uh, kick in the rocker with a mellow entry, just kind of bleeding in towards a nice flat tail. And this 
bottom planes really well. We've got these hard edge rails, really making the use, the maximized use of the bottom of this board, the full width of the board nearly, uh, to really make sure every bit of this bottom is planing, getting you up on foil, which allows you to ride a little smaller. In fact, for me, you know, the 75 liter probably felt like a little bit overkill. I do like a board around five feet, but I wouldn't feel bad at all sizing down uh, into the 60 liter models at all. So uh, unless I was going for light wind, then I'd probably want to size up a little bit, but, uh, or if I was learning, you know, size up a little bit for me, but uh, from this board, but in terms of, you know, how it should be ridden, fairly close to, you know, your normal size that you're looking for, maybe a little smaller, cause they are a little longer than average and they are very easy to ride. They're very efficient. So uh, you could definitely size down if, if you're thinking that you want to do that. We have a handle here in the middle. It's a really comfortable handle. It kind of goes in and under like this. It's not just square. So it's really easy to hold on to, really comfortable. And you know, it's a handle, but it, it's placed nice. It does its thing. Got the scale up front here, really long track box. This one's probably, I don't know, two inches longer than average. So no matter what foils you're using, you know, whether they like to be ridden way up forward here or way in the back, uh, or somewhere in between, like is kind of the normal for most foils here, uh, are gonna fit on this really well. I rode it uh, with a North foil last, and that was right in the middle of the box, uh, somewhere between the AK foil kind of suggested line and the starboard foil suggested line. Uh, that's sort of your average spot. Uh, but some, some other foils like if you're ridden further forward or further back as well, just depending on your setup and the brand and whatever. Um, so they give you, a whole plethora of options. And one unexpected benefit of that that I found is I was able to slide my foil in with the nuts and screws in the track uh, or in the plate without having to disassemble and realign them because the plate's long enough that you can insert them in like this and they, it's kind of angled in like this. So you kind of insert in like that and slide all the way to the back and then it drops in. And so I was able to get uh, my foil into there without even taking the nuts off, which is cool. It's not going to be the case for every foil, uh, but for the one I was riding, it worked really well. Coming into the tail, we have sort of a thumb pintail sort of a shape here. As you can tell, again, real hard edges again. That's just to keep that release real clean. It also keeps the edges of the board off the water when you're making hard turns and ripping it up out there. Um, so it's just a real efficient, functional tail. It does have uh, sort of the square tail or uh, you know shape here offset about halfway down the rail. That's just gonna give you a little bit more stability, a bit more volume in the tail when you're knee starting to give you some stability while you're doing that. But for the most part, you know, this isn't really doing a whole lot once you get planing, once you get riding. This is the light tech construction. Uh, this board comes in a couple different constructions. We also have it in stock in the blue carbon in some sizes. Um, the blue carbon is a little bit lighter weight. It is uh, a more eco-friendly construction. You know, they really go a long way to make these boards uh, as least an impact as possible. Obviously we're into wind sports. We love being out there in mother nature, so we'll take care of her. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a nice board. The light tech obviously is a little bit cheaper. This is our most popular construction. It's really durable. You know, you can really beat on these boards. They're built tough, um, but still fairly light. This board here is about 15 pounds at the uh, 5 75 liter size. Uh, it also comes with a nice board sock, uh, ships with that, so that's cool. The blue carbon models are going to come with uh, straps. So it'll come with three straps. Uh, the light tech construction does not. Um, so if you need straps and you're buying the light tech construction, uh, you'd be sure to add some straps. Let us know. We can include the screws for this particular board. And that way you'll be a happy camper when you get out there and not disappointed in what you uh, received there. So that's kind of the rundown on this board. Um, I'll give you my review now after riding it a little bit. This is a really good utility, do it all kind of a board. If I had to say, you know, it was best for anything in particular, I would say, you know, number one, new riders. This is a phenomenal board. Make sure you get the right size. You're gonna want something a little bigger uh, as you're learning. But this is a board you can definitely progress into. Really easy to learn on because of how stable and efficient it is. And also the price point and the durability of it's just extra bonus points on top of that. 
Um, so it's something you can definitely grow into and appreciate, you know, as you reach into your intermediate advanced levels as well. And, you know, being so durable, it's a board that you can look forward to keeping for a number of years so you don't need to reinvest in a larger board for light wind in the near future, even as you progress. Um, so pretty stoked on these models. Uh, the light tech construction is definitely one of the best values out there in the market in terms of you know, what you get for what you pay. There's a lot of bells and whistles. There's a lot of design in these boards. You know, it's not just like a recycled model from like four years ago, you know, that you're just reusing the mold. You know, they're reinvesting in new molds, lots of good sizes in this one. And the multiple constructions really gives you that option whether you want to spend a lot of money or not. Um, so I'm pretty stoked on this board. Secondly, I would say, you know, in the smaller sizes for those more experienced riders. Um, this is a really fun board in the waves. It is a little bit more lengthy, a little narrower, a little, you know, pointed nose. Um, it's got a lot of the features that those, you know, advanced surf guys are going to want. I would say, you know, if you're into that, I would size down slightly, maybe five to 10 liters from what you would ride in a lot of other boards. That's going to give you, you know, the kind of performance you want in this board is so easy to ride that that shouldn't be a problem at all as long as you have adequate power in your wing. Um, additionally, I would say this board's really great for freestyle. So if you're into jumping, spinning, doing that kind of stuff, you know, th these boards have a really nice shape and outline for that. You know, they're not too cumbersome. They're, they're really well designed, has a really, you know, good center of balance and, and the strap placement's really nice for landing on foil um, or when you actually touch down and you need to launch off again. Um, you know, it's, it's really great for that as well. So, you know, pick a size that's gonna be small enough for what you wanna do, but also have enough volume to land and take back off in the kind of winds that you're dealing with regularly. So, you know, if you're doing jumps and lighter winds, you might wanna size up slightly if you're out there and nuking winds all the time. Don't need to worry about that or if you're just a super light rider size down get something smaller personally i'm more of a surf free ride guy most often i do some jumping uh, and i found this board is just a, a suitable you know option for all of that it really wasn't a standout performer in in any particular category but it's just happy to kind of do what you want you don't think about this board a lot uh, it's a little wider than i would typically ride which is you know part of the reason why i'd say i would size down slightly for a personal board uh, for good wins but um, this does everything quite well. It's real reliable, do it all, versatile kind of utility board. So pretty stoked on that. Obviously the guys at Starboard know what they're doing. Uh, they've been making subs and, and windsurfers and stuff for a long time. This board is, is a really nice balance of, of all of those features. Um, they got some unique stuff going on that you know you wouldn't find in a more affordable board from most brands. So two big thumbs up for Starboard. Uh, if there's anything I'm gonna say negative about this board, and it's really kind of hard to do, with the pricing in mind, it's like yes, it is a little heavier than you know your $2,000 boards, but uh, you can always you know upgrade to the blue carbon if you're looking for that lighter weight, higher end performance and, and price. Um, but this is one of the best boards in this price tier, so definitely take a peek at it if you're price conscious, looking for a really good board. If you're looking for uh, a board you can grow into, this is a good option for that. Um, on the downside, I would say you know, the only real gripe I have would be. It's a little bit sticky on the touchdown. Um, has somewhat to do with the flat bottom, hard rails. It's really good for planing because of that. It really wants to act like a board that's bigger than it is when you're out there riding it uh, and, and looking to take off in lighter winds and less power. But when you touch down, it is a little bit more sticky because of that. It just you know adds the brakes on a little bit more. It's not so much that it's, it's really a a red flag don't buy this board by any means at all you know it's just a, an observation we like to tell you guys how it is uh, and, and come up with some kind of a, a negative to every product because every product isn't perfect it's not always going to have every perfect attribute because sometimes they're at odds with one another and that's what you get a lot of times with boards that are super efficient is that when they do touch down uh, they are a bit more sticky so for this particular board, I would say, uh, yeah, that's really the only negative I would say about it is it's, it's slightly more sticky on the touchdown. If you're somebody that's not touching down a lot or you know isn't really concerned with that, you know maybe you're riding foils that aren't really fast. Uh, so you know when you touch down, you can rebound really quickly without having to build speed again. Then you know it's a, a non-issue. But uh, I figured I'd mention that. This has been Tucker with Matt Kiteboarding. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and put those in the comments section below. 
Uh, stay tuned for more reviews for us. We're gonna have one here in the near future for the Starboard Ace Downwind board. That's also a really phenomenal light wind wing board. So that's an interesting one to look forward to. We'll also have their inflatable models here at some point in the future with the airfoil DLX and the uh, inflatable version of the Ace Downwind in an inflatable version, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll be testing that and getting you guys reviews on those as well. So stay tuned.